plate. Morning folks, Andy Truck Davy in the truck, coming to you today from Perth, where it's slightly overcast, starting to cloud over now, 16 degrees, not bad, not bad at all. Right, let's get started. Um, we'll start with the coronavirus update. These are the figures for 070620, yesterday in other words, okay. Tested in Scotland, 126,012, um, and that's up 1,469 on Saturday. Hello, good morning everyone. Tested positive, 15,621, and that's plus 18. Okay, currently active cases that they know about, 646, a phenomenal drop. Deaths, here we go again, deaths, 2,415. There were no new deaths from coronavirus recorded yesterday, but the number will be bigger today when today's figures come out. Um, the, the figures are always a... Uh, smaller at the weekend for some reason it's going to be the reporting I believe and they don't get the information through until today basically right combined deaths this is accumulative with the national record for Scotland's uh, figures is 3,964 really big number so one okay let's move on to review of the weekend's news alright Friday, Bojo the Clown begs EU migrants who have left because of the coronavirus lockdown to come back. And of course, that set off international and a home. A comedy, if you like, um, sarcasm, if you like, towards Boris Johnson and his government. Guy Verhofstadt tweeted, that's a, an MEP, of course, a German MEP, um, you know, but he, he tweeted, but I thought the foreigners stealing British jobs was the reason for Brexit. <laughs> Radislaw Sikowski, MEP for Poland, tweeted, surely you don't want these benefit scroungers back. The whole idea of hashtag glorious Brexit was fewer polls and more Commonwealth migrants, migrants, immigrants, sorry. So get on with it, you're on your own. Good luck with that. And even the House of Lords get in on the laugh. Huh? Baroness Natalie Bennett tweeted, Oh, the irony. <laughs> huh? The Migrant Rights Network tweeted, We wrote to you on December 8th, before the general election, with at, hash to, uh, with at 3 million, seeking an apology for your comments that EU citizens were, be, were, were being able to treat the UK like it was part of their own country. <laughs> now you want them back. Pure comedy gold. Uh, Boris Johnson's brass neck. Please come back, EU migrants, even though we're, asked you, even though we're having Brexit to get, get rid of you and you look down the borders. Nuts. <coughs> the UK needs these skilled and unskilled workers because the population here is either unfit, too old, or no willing to do the work that these people are willing to do. Okay? Okay. The UK reports the first coal power free month. No coal generated electricity anywhere in the UK, right? Most of which was down to Scottish renewables, right? With Scotland's excess of electricity going to England, Wales and Northern Ireland to make up for their lack of capacity, right? But here's a sting in the tail. Scotland's providers are being charged up to £20 million a year more than providers, energy, energy producers anywhere else in the UK 
even though we're putting more electricity into the grid, um, sorry, we're making up the shortfall of electricity for England, Wales and Northern Ireland, National Grid, which was actually built with the money for the, for the people, and then became a private company, of course, are charging Scottish producers mere, uh, or Scottish energy producers mere than anybody else to hook up to the grid, even though they're desperate for the electricity that Scotland is producing. Absolutely outrageous. National Grid should be taken back into public hands. Simple as that. Right. Friday, it's also reported that England's world beating test and trace system will not be operational till late September or early October. Tony Prestige, a chief operating officer of the outsourced NHS scheme operated by CERCO, has said, just not ready. Don't have the people in place, don't have the training done. Nothing. Why was it outsourced? Well, that has to do with the Langley, Langley reforms in 2012, as well as the Health and Social Care Act in 2012. Right? Which seen um, the, the National Health Service in England broken up and the legal requirement for uh, the English government or the UK government to provide health care to the people of England. Right? So all the local public health officers, which would have been part of the... Um, which would have been part of the NHS and would have known their particular areas and would have been able to actively and, and, and put in place good test, trace and isolate systems, they were all gone due to the Langley reforms. All gone. So that's why it had to be outsourced. Meanwhile in Scotland, trace and protect, up and running, no bother. Why? Because we still have our local public health officers and all 32 health boards. Simple as that. Nothing about it, but no mention of that in the press. No, you know. Brexiteers double down, also on Friday, Brexiteers double down on no deal Brexit. We mog using Thatcher's no, no, no speech to make it clear the UK will not ask for an extension. Because, eh, obviously, the negotiations are not going well. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're due to go to cliff edge on the 31st of December. But the UK won't ask for an extension. And Mr Mogg makes that clear. The Minister for the 18th century and father of the house, the guy that took a um, voting in person to a new level, with his 800 metre long or a kilometre long queue to go through the lobbies. Absolutely nuts. Right? But Mogg doesn't really care. He wants a no deal. So far, during this crisis, and since Brexit in January, he's 70 million quid better off, it's been reported. Think about that, 70 million quid better off. Also on Friday, food standards. And the notion of keeping food standards at the high degree that we have them here also was scrapped. Out the windy. Right? and the US-UK trade talks. Now, Michael Gove stated over a year ago in an eloquent speech that he gave to the National Union of Farmers that they would not lower food stand uh, standards. Liz Trust, who's now got the job that Gove, Gove had then, also stated just a few weeks ago that they wouldn't change food standards. But then it emerges that in the Cabinet meetings over the last few days, Michael Gove and Liz Trust have actually been shoving for the scrapping of food standards. Absolutely outrageous. So, chlorinated chicken, hormone injected beef, um, and the uh, rats, rat turds, rodent uh, insects, and hair, and dirt, and food coming in from America won't be allowed. How they're going to do it and try to protect the British farmers is a short term measure where they will charge more tariffs for foods for America that don't. Uh, meet our food standards, our end standards. So if you're a coronated chicken producer, chicken producer, you'll pay a higher tariff to get your coronated chicken into the UK, but it will still come into the UK. All right. Well, we're still on Friday tea. New Bees BBC director is appointed. Tim Davy will take over for Tony Hall later in the year. 
All you really need to know about this guy is he's a Tory. That's it. You know, he is a Tory. That's all we really need to know about this guy. Right, also on Friday, China warns Boris Johnson that there'll be consequences if the UK does allow 3 million Hong Kong citizens to relocate to the UK. China is of course correct, there will be repercussions. England will go on bloody fire. Brexit was to shut the doors and keep Johnny Foreigner for out. And Bojo's going to import 30, uh, 3 million Chinese citizens into the UK. Aye, I can see that can do well in England. England will go up in bloody flames. Right, new poll. Poll out shows that 52% of Scots want Indy and 59% of Scots think that, the U, that uh, Scotland will be run well from Edinburgh and it'll be governed well through Edinburgh. So 52% want independence according to that poll, but 59% of people are very confident that Edinburgh will govern better than what a uh, than what London does. That's interesting, isn't it? Even though seven percent of them are probably not voters, they believe that the uh, Scotland would be better run for Edinburgh than what it would for London. Right, on to Saturday. So that was Friday's news. On to Saturday. Hey. It's reported that Boris Johnson's party received cash, the Conservative Party, received cash from nine Russian donors named in the support, uh, suppressed report on Russian interference into the UK de democratic process. No one of that report's not seen the light of day, eh? So that Russian report that we're all waiting on, the one that he looked into Russia's influence in the UK's uh, democratic system, um... You know, it's been reported that Boris Johnson's Conservative Party has a, received a donations for nine people named in that Russian report. Scandalous. Right, NHS, a under pressure UK government releases NHS England's COVID data deals with big tech companies, right? Open Democracy had threatened to take the UK to court if they didn't tell them who they'd done data deals with on co a, a, to gather and data mine the information for COVID-19 patients in England, right? So as it turns out anyway, there's four big companies that the UK have outsourced or allowed, uh, the, the, the UK government, Westminster government is allowing to mine data on COVID-19 patients in England and Wales. Remember, Scotland's got a separate NHS and they don't have access to Scotland's NHS, right? <coughs> Google, Faculty, Palantir and Microsoft are all getting access to English patients' data, data, right? Okay, Faculty, as you already know, who, is link, who has links with Dominic Cummings, has got another seven contracts within Whitehall, which allows them to data mine over information for Whitehall, where all the government departments are, Social Security, Inland Revenue, Health, as I say, Health doesn't matter here in Scotland, we've got our own system, but you get the message. The UK government selling citizen, uh, England and Welsh citizens data, uh, data to um, big tech companies. They'll be able to target uh, adverts and things like that to them. Now, faculty, as I've explained before, it's sort of like Cambridge Analytica. So what they will do with that information is they will uh, use it in political campaigns and further elections, more or less guaranteeing the Tories will be in power forever. You know? <coughs> Murdo Fraser on how Scotland couldn't um, cover the costs of the, the COVID-19 pandemic with the broad shoulders of Westminster <laughs> was fact-checked by several fact-checking sites and surprise, surprise, he was talking pish. <laughs> <coughs> <coughs> no juice could Scotland have afforded it. It would actually, we would actually have been able to spend more money on it according to these fact-checking sites. Because so far, the UK government 
is spending 30 billion quid on the furlough scheme alone up until October, right? Only 3.5 billion of that's being spent in Scotland, but Scotland is being billed 10 billion of that. Anyway, because by the time the figure's finished, it's going to be over 100 billion quid. I'm only talking about a furlough scheme there, right? So, um, Murdo Fraser um, was proven to be an arsehole and talk, uh, sorry, was proven to be a bam and talking crap. Right. Slab. Eh, the Labour Party in Scotland, because it's no Scottish Labour. There's no such thing as Scottish Labour. There's no registered Scottish Labour Party. Right. The idiots doubled down on Naughty Indy Ref 2. They, you know... You can't help but look at them and think, stupidity. This is what stupid looks like. The Labour Party in Scotland is exactly what stupid looks like. They were almost wiped out. They have been almost wiped out in Scotland because of their stance on independence. So what are they going to do? They're going to double down on it at half wits. Right, hold on, I need to change my iPad. This one's run out. Right, where are we? Get back Saturday. Aye. Car crash in the so-called Scottish Tories, which are only Scottish Tories at all. They're British Tories or English Tories, whatever you want to call them. Because um, there is no Scottish registered Conservative Party either. There's only the UK Conservative Party or the English Conservative Party. Right. Anyway, car crash. Jackson Carlow and his so-called Scottish Tories are under pressure to get on board to pressurise Westminster for a Brexit extension. All three devolved nations are now pressurising Westminster for a Brexit extension. But as I've just said, Moggy said no, and Moggy's making a fortune out of it, and Moggy doesn't care how many people it'll kill, how many people it'll turn into, it will uh, throw into poverty, because Moggy's making a fortune out of it. Jacob Reese Mogg's company stands to make billions out of Bre a hard, a, a no deal Brexit, a hard Brexit. All right. Prime Minister... Bojo the Clown is being pressurised by the scientists to dump the rhetoric, get back to um, getting guidance on COVID-19 for the scientists instead of just hearing what the scientists have got to say and ignoring the scientists. Anyway, the scientists have warned them there's a second wave coming. You better dump your rhetoric and start listening to us guys. All right. That's the stories I picked to talk about on Saturday. Right, Sunday. So here we go. Sunday, Forbes magazine, which is the rich, po uh, which is a uh, basically a a magazine that a uh, you know it collates the rich. It looks at uh, where the money is in the world and things like, that, and it represents the rich. To be honest with you, anyway, Forbes magazine reports that the Bank of England has bailed out some of the EU's biggest companies via its COVID corporate finance facility. So the Bank of England has been giving money to some of the biggest and wealthiest families in the UK to the sum of 16 billion, uh, sorry, in Europe, to the sum of 16 billion pounds so far, right? Uh, the money so far... 16 billion quid's been given out, but hey, here's the name of some of the companies I went to, right? JCB, massive, massive company, um, owned by an Italian family, ultimately owned by an Italian family. So the money went to an Italian, right? Whitefield, the retail uh, property company, right? Another multi billionaire family getting money. And Tottenham Hotspur. Not the football club, but the parent company of the football club, which is a big, big company. They benefited to the tune of 550 million quid. Right? I've only listed a few of them because I could be here all day listing the ones that I would only take 200, 250 million here and 750 million there till we got up to the 16 billion. I don't have that amount of time. My breaks don't last that long. You know? Right. New laws to gag journalists come into place shortly, right? 
and that will make sure that public interest stories don't make it in, uh, make it out. The uh, public in interest stories uh, that are deemed um, that are deemed to be of interest in programmes, uh, they'll, they'll be gagged. Journalists will be gagged. People like me following the PPE story, right, um, in England, and the outsourcing to Movato, and uh, the claims about 11,000 tonne of PPE coming to Scotland. Turns out it was the other way around. We were actually supplying NHS England because they couldn't get the bloody stuff. So uh, when Matt Hancock stood up in the Houses of Parliament and said that 11,000 tonnes of PPE had went for the UK or England to uh, uh, Westminster to Scotland, it was a lot of bollocks. It was actually the other way around. And that came out, of course, over the weekend. You'd have seen the tweets for Gene Freeman. you have seen the response to Gene Freeman and the BBC. you have seen um, the First Minister's response to, to Boris Johnson and his false claims. You know, as it turns out, we were actually providing PPE to England. But anyway, back to these laws that are going to uh, gag people like me if we fall on that sort of story. Um, if we have a look at uh, Craig Murray and Mark Hurst at the moment, right, they would be much called the citizens journalists. He would, no, and they, and they, they thought there was a public interest in releasing the Alex Salmon story or giving a different perspective to the Alex Salmon story. And they now find themselves in court, right? Well, these new laws that will take it further than that. It would see guys like me following this public interest story about PPE and putting it out on our, our uh, um, Facebook Live or, or making videos about it. It would see people like me face um, jail time of up to 13 years. And uh, this will all come in through changes to the Official Secrets Act and the Terrorism Act. So basically, they're going to gag um, journalists. Uh, now, True Republic did a full expose on that, and if you want to read it, it's on my timeline down there. All right. Coronavirus crisis. Now, also on Saturday, coronavirus crisis won't let Bojo off the hook on Brexit disaster. Double whammy. Reporting the Guardian. Funny enough, they use the term double whammy. I wonder if they've been watching my videos. Anyway, what I've been saying here, when the rest of the world is recovering and their economies are starting back up again for the coronavirus crisis, the UK isn't getting any better. We are going to go for recession to depression and then maybe in two or three years' time we'll recover to recession and stay in recession for at least a decade, a decade and a half while new trade deals are, are struck around the world. The average time it takes to, to uh, strike a trade deal is between 7 and 10 years. So we're looking at a decade at least of poverty. We already have poverty at a huge level. Starvation. We already have starvation at a large level. Um, and worse, lower, uh, lower and lower uh, living standards. And the deprivations that brings with it, with drugs, alcoholism, all the things we've seen in the Maggie years will be back. Child abuse, all that sort of thing. Right, also Saturday. Just as scientists are telling Bojo there's a second wave coming because of the behaviours that have been going on under, um, the, under lockdown, with people in England ignoring walk down and go to the beach and things like that. And Dominic Cummins has got a big bit to play in that, but we'll get to that shortly. Um, Bojo tells ministers to speed up releasing the lockdown to get the economy up and running. Now, this story and the story before that um, about coronavirus, coronavirus and the economy uh, and Brexit coming as a double whammy, these all run into each other because Boris Johnson wants um, the lockdown completely lifted in England to get the economy up and running, to save millions of jobs, even though he knows there's a hard Brexit coming at the end yet, and they millions of jobs are going to go anyway. So all this money that has been paid to companies to keep them afloat, keep their employees on the payroll and all that, all pissed up against the wall because of Brexit coming. Right? And the Herald, Guy Day, Richard Leonard on Sunday, um, Scope, to talk about how he and the Labour Party are going to double down in no second referendum. Can you believe this, idiot Leonard? You know what I mean? Apart from the fact his party's already finished here and he's going to double down on it, right? 
The Labour Party have now put themselves in a position in Scotland where they want to deny democracy. Can you get your head wrapped around how stupid this man is? It's not, but to be honest, to be fair, it's not really Richard Leonard. It's Jackie Bailey and the rest of the orange order which are left hanging on on what's left of the bloody Labour Party. It's not just the Tories that are full of numpties. Like the bigot Murdo Fraser, also orange order. Okay. Right. The Guardian did a review on the Cummins affair. Right? No, got to be um, Cummins, Breck and Lockdown and the effect it's had on the credibility of the UK government and Boris Johnson's position as the Prime Minister. So the Guardian did a review of it and what, it did, what the Guardian did was it took a run around the European states and had a look at the press in France, Germany, Norway, Denmark, Austria, um, Sweden, and had a look at what was being said in the papers in these countries on what was going on, right? Anyway, the combination of it all is that the international press now believe that actually Dominic Cummins is the boss at number 10, and Boris Johnson is just a clown. We need credibility, right? Um, they also believe that he, when it comes to international dealings, because of the affair, then nobody will take Johnson serious or the UK serious. But it also, he, they also believe every single one of these states, these nations, that they went and checked the press out on the Cummins story over, they all think that Cummins has damaged public health in England and Wales and that people will die in England and Wales because of Cummins' behaviour. They don't think it'll be as bad in Scotland because there's only a lunatic fringe of about 26% of the population which ignores Holyrood. In fact, it's probably less than that now. It's probably about 18%. But what we have to remember that is that a, the majority of Scots take their direction for Holyrood and the majority of Scots see Holyrood as being with a the centre of public life and the democratic life in Scotland. So they don't think the damage done by Cummins will be as bad in Scotland because we're taking direction for Nicola Sturgeon and we're taking direction for Edinburgh. All right, they're the stories I chose to pick, uh, to, to talk about on Sunday. Let's move on to, I only do a couple of ones on Monday because obviously my show reviews the days before uh, news or uh, the weekend's news. I review the full weekend and then on Friday I do a review of the week, but my daily show reviews the day before's news, all right? Anyway, Monday. <laughs> Just to start off a week, well, the USA demand that Randy Andy, Prince Andrew, is handed over <coughs> to answer questions on the Epstein carry-on. <laughs> yeah, Mammy will need to let him out the cupboard. Yeah, after all, she's just retired them. Now, will Prince Philip put Andy down now? Or will they ship him off to America to face the consequences of his actions? Probably Prince Philip will put Andy down. Because you know what like Prince Philip is? He likes to protect the firm. That's what the Queen calls her family. The firm. They're a bunch of bloody gangsters. They're nothing better than a mob in a mafia. So there's every chance that Randy Andy's going to get knocked off. <laughs> okay. Right, and the final thing I want to talk about for the day is the big thing that's all over all the papers and is all over a... Eh, Radio Scotland this morning is the Black Lives Matter protests at the weekend. Now, there was one in Edinburgh and one in Glasgow where people physically attended. Inverness and Aberdeen did the right thing and they had poster campaigns. The Ness Bridge was decorated with posters in Inverness and several places around Aberdeen were decorated with posters for Black Lives Matter. But Edinburgh and Glasgow, well, they decided to have physical... Um, protests. Now I myself as a political activist would normally attend these type of these things but I put public health before everything else and I did my protesting online yesterday. A lot of you might have seen the video I put yesterday morning urging people not to go along to Glasgow Green or go along to Holyrood Park. I have to say though that the pictures I have seen 
did show that the people in measure uh, did try to keep to social distancing the best they could. They stuck in family groups or small groups and they were certainly spread out. But in the pictures I did see, um, I recognise one or two people. Um, one of them is actually the youth organiser for a political party. And Sam, I thought you'd have known bloody better. That's the end of your political career right there, you muppet. Saying that right enough, the party you represent is probably never going to get elected anywhere in Scotland ever again anyway. But it was still stupid, Sam. You'd have a chance of taking the illness back to your community. Um, as I say, but the protests in England and Wales didn't go quite so well. There was a good few violent outbreaks in London and Manchester and a statue got dumped in the river in Bristol. Right. The protests in Scotland were on the main um, peaceful. Only two arrests in Glasgow and they were for public disorder matters. All right. And the final thing I want to talk about is quarantine introduced for international visitors and people returning home from overseas as of midnight last night. You know, up until now I've been saying that it's closing the barn door after the, after the horse has bolted. And earlier, when they were muting this, it was. But now that we see the, the R rate in Scotland is coming down very rapidly, then all of a sudden, I don't think it's a bad idea after all. You know, making people quarantine when they come back, because, as I say, the R rate here has fallen. The amount of people that are eh, showing up, newly infected in Scotland, is falling. It was only 18 yesterday. The active cases are down to 600 odds. So, I maybe it is a good idea to get this quarantine in place um, now for international visitors and people returning from other countries. So as I say, this time last week, it was a shutting the barn door after the horse is bolted. But the day looks like the horse is back in again and it's time to shut the barn doors. Morning, Maz. Nice to see you there, mate. Mate, right, what's the stories I wanted to talk about in the review of the weekend's news? I hope you found it interesting. That's another iPad done. New one, good. Just as well they're only 86 pence or 89 pence, see? Eh? I'm getting through quite a few iPads. <laughs> I do actually have an iPad. I should probably use that. <laughs> <coughs> right, so that's the indie truck daily part of the show done. Start, let's see. Let's see what the comments say. I'll maybe have to move these folks so I can read your comments. I'll look down at you through here. You approve of what happened to the statue, Tina? Well, that's fair enough. Um, there was only two people protesting in Dundee. Well, I don't think Dundee was meant to ever protest anyway, Moira. Um, hold on, Auntie. Have you look at what you were talking about there? Um... Ah, the amount of people uh, encouraging the people to break down lockdown. That'll be a political move for down south, actually. They'll be using bots and things like that. Um, and so they will. Because, of course, if Scotland's doing better than England, that's going to reflect badly, badly on Westminster. So, you know, don't, I wouldn't be surprised if there's bots encouraging people to break lockdown up here. Wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. The horse is bolted and people are coming from low R rate countries. Well, Fraser, you're probably right, actually, because the UK is still, well, England really, is still really get quite a high R rate. I was looking at it regionally, and it would appear that the northwest of England is sitting about 1.4. Geraldine, food standards are about to get down the, down the tubes. You're right. Ah, hey, Lenny. That statue would have been worth a fortune in scrap. <laughs> yes, Anne. Yes. 
if the First Minister could get the Holyrood to agree, then um, then an election could be called very quickly, yes. So I am. So they could call an early election, they just have to agree to dissolve the Parliament. You're right, Beth, Slab, Slab have learned nothing. It's absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I was reading a, uh, an opinion piece by George Kerriver, who was saying that he he has to admire Ian Murray, grudgingly admire him, with we, we his one last dash through at the dice at trying to prevent Scotland from having a referendum. Because <laughs> you've got to remember, it's Ian Murray and Jackie Bailey that are actually the driving forces in a... Uh, in Slab, or Labour in Scotland. The Dundas statue in Edinburgh was vandalised. That doesn't surprise me, Robbie. After all, the man made his money out of, or, or on the back of the slave trade. I believe it was 680,000 people that he enslaved, or sold into slavery, eh, Henry Dundas. It shouldn't, it shouldn't just be eh, vandalised, it should be bloody well ripped down. And the story put up. Hi, Sarah. Nice to see you there, darling. Wife's watching again. You need to watch what I say about her. Uh. Could Ian bring her MPs home? Of course he could. Of course he could. What uh, the UK government's playing on here is the fact that devolution's actually here. Without devolution... Ian Blackford could, could declare the union over. Aye, Gwen. Aye. The... Ractal... Pamine. Aye. Hey, that's an asthma drug, Gwen. Is that what they're using as a hormone? A growth hormone earlier? Jesus Christ. I'm glad you brought that to my attention, Gwen. I'm going to have a look at that. Yes, Maz. There's no reason why Ian Blackford can't convene the Scottish Grand Committee in Westminster and use his majority MPs to dissolve the union and bring them up the road for a constitutional convention. Don't think there's anything stopping off with doing that, Maz. Good morning, Stonaway. Kenny, I'll be seeing you as soon as they get the ferries open again. Merchant City needs renamed. I don't really think Merchant City needs renamed at all. I know why they named it Merchant City, but the name Merchant itself is innocuous. There are many merchants and traders still in the area, none of which had any to do with slave trade. Is the slave trade. Trade. So no, Merchant City doesn't need any name. Yeah, maybe Buchanan Street, Cochrane Street, Wilson Street, but Merchant City? Nah, that's innocuous. You only learnt that the statue was vandalised the day, Robbie, did you? I'd had and I didn't you know. You're the first one to let me know. Aye. Lindsay, I think the uh, Aberdeen and Inverness got the Black May, Black Lives Matter thing right, correct. Decorating the bridges and things like that, rather than putting people's public health at risk. Aye, aye, I seen that Fraser. If there was a general election tomorrow, the SNP would have fifty eight to the fifty nine and only Ian Murray would survive, aye, I know. 